I choose um, every day to, to wake up and be the best version of myself that I can be and to try to do the next right thing, to try to, and, and for me that has been through this gym. Regina is a visionary. She has always been one, she's got big dreams, a big vision, and when she first told us about this gym, you know, it was like, okay, that'd be cool, that'd be cool, and then put it on the back burner a little bit, and she talked a little bit about it some more, and she told us about what she wanted to accomplish, and we, you know, those around us, like her, her <clears throat> core group of people were like, okay, we'll do anything that, anything that you want. And her dreams and visions were getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and we opened Rebel's doors the last um, day of March. So growing up, it was, I had a great life. I mean, my, I had amazing parents. They were, I was so blessed to have them. I still have my dad around. Um, I was the youngest of three. I have two older brothers and I was the baby and the only girl. So I was a little spoiled also, but in a good way. Um, I was always athletic growing up in school, was class favorite, class clown, all of the above. Um, when I got into high school, I, I think that I wanted, I wanted more. I mean, of course you're a teenage girl and you want to be noticed by the boys and all that kind of stuff. And I was a heavier set girl. I wasn't, looking back at it now, I was never overweight. I was just healthy, I guess. I was athletic. Um, I started actually going to her classes. Um, just kind of found her I'm like oh yeah I remember her I'll, I'll go try and work out with her and I was hooked she not only was she just an incredible person to be around she just makes you feel so welcome and 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 it was so fun to be there um, but her workouts were killer like I was pushed to my limits every single class and that's what kept me coming back more and more because she really knows what she's doing and how how to push you I, I, you asked me about bulimia and what that is and kind of maybe to shed some light on what that was. I suffered with that for 40 plus years. I started when I was 15 years old in high school. And um, bulimia is a form of eating disorder. It is one that typically somebody will binge binging is with it so you would binge a large amount of food and then you would make yourself purge or throw up to get rid of the food i i had a feeling of euphoria when i made myself throw up it wasn't i didn't feel sick i didn't feel bad afterwards i didn't i got incredibly thin through high school um it wasn't my senior year my parents finally kind of figured out what was going or caught me I guess and then asked me some questions and um, no one knew what it was back then nobody really knew how to deal with it or, or how to treat it or anything so they were scared and they took me to our you know local physician and uh, he flat out told them that I was committing slow suicide um, so my senior year they took me out of school and put me in a psychiatric ward my senior year and was in there for three months never saw a dietitian till the day I left um, I can remember them being like they they didn't know what it was or what would you know cause somebody to want to do something like that I think so they wanted to put a label on it. they kept asking me were you abused as a kid were you sexually assaulted were you all of these things and I wasn't you know I had amazing childhood growing up I got out of there and graduated high school I 
immediately started back with the bulimia again because I didn't, it, I was there for three months and never got any help whatsoever. And that laid on a bunch of guilt and shame because I knew how much money that my parents had put into that and how concerned they were and everything else. So then the game started and the facade started and I had to put on this face, you know, that everything was okay. And then the secrecy of hiding it and the shame of hiding it and everything else came into play. It jumped to a whole new level when I went off to college because at that time I wasn't I wasn't under my parents' roof, and so it just magnified everything. And I realized then that this, that I thought I had control over and that was giving me everything I wanted in my life, now had control of me, and I couldn't not do it anymore. And it was no longer serving the purpose that it served for me. So where the bulimia left, I started picking up alcohol. I would start drinking and um, I think for me, it was just trying to numb everything out. And I, the only time that I have ever attempted suicide was when alcohol was involved. When I got into, it was junior college, and I can remember f hurting so bad inside and feeling so out of control that I just needed something tangible. So I can remember cutting on my arm drunk at a party, unfortunately, and um, and I think that's where I kind of want to pause for just a second and explain to people that I, I realized then that I was a cutter. I don't think at that point in my life that I really wanted to end my life, but I wanted to feel something tangible for the pain that I was feeling inside. I finally just convinced my parents that I wanted to go off to school. I got my associate's degree and I wanted to go off to Denton, to Dallas, and go to North Texas State. And so I got into the school, got there, didn't know a soul, didn't know anybody. And um, I think that's when it hit me the most because I was so alone with myself. And I was drinking heavily to, you know, numb everything else out. I wasn't going to class. I was doing everything that I wasn't supposed to be doing. And that was the first time that I ever intentionally tried to end my life. I overdosed on some, um, some medication that I had had. And for three days, I hallucinated on campus and passed out in front of the administration building. I came to at the hospital with my dad kneeling next to my bed holding my hand and um ah. I never at that moment in my life I saw how much pain I was putting them through I at that moment regretted that I woke up I am grateful to God now that that was not the case and that he saw other avenues for me. But at that moment, I really was sad that I was still there and that I was still causing them so much pain. And I think that there's this stereotype about people that try to commit suicide that you think that it's such a selfish act and you, and you feel like that it's... Um, they don't understand how much pain they're causing those that they leave behind. And I think for me, I felt like at that time I was causing more pain to those that were around me alive than I would have been had I not been there. I don't see it as something selfish. I think that when someone is in that position, you do not see another way. Like there was not 
another way out for me. There's so many resources now and there's so much more awareness now than there was then. And I'm so incredibly grateful for that. There still needs to be more. There still needs to be more awareness in the sense that an individual that's going through something like that is not sitting there thinking, I'm gonna take my own life and I don't care who has to deal with it or who has who I'm leaving behind. I don't care about any of that. That's it's not about that. It's about not seeing any other way and truly honestly convincing yourself and believing it to your core that everybody else around you would be better off. Um, I now have 13, almost 14 years sobriety and I can, it has honestly saved my life, honestly saved my life in times when, um, I, again, I didn't think that there were any other options, that that honestly, I had people around me that told me differently. I had people around me that told me if I just kept putting one foot in front of the other that it would be better. That if I took it one second, one minute, one hour at a time that it was going to be okay. And so that's what I did. And it still wasn't, and it was through, you know, AA, and it wasn't even dealing with my eating disorder at the time. My eating disorder was still incredibly rampant. They still had no idea how to deal with any of this stuff. And, um, but at least I had that piece of not drinking anymore for a while, <laughs> for a period of time. It's still a struggle. It's a daily struggle. It's something I struggle with, you know, all the time. But today I have that choice and I have, that I didn't think I had before. Today I have options. I started to feel empowered. I started to feel, do things for myself that I never thought I could do. Doing things with my body that I'm pushing it to limits that I never thought I could do. And it felt amazing. I started doing boot camps and then I started training people and that was when I started feeling that fulfillment. You know, when I could actually work with others and help them to see things in themselves that they didn't see was possible. To see them actually try things and do things and to feel empowered. I think for so many people, we're constantly being pushed down, not, maybe not intentionally by others, but life in general, you know? It's one thing after another and you are constantly feel like you're getting hit up against the wall with something. And I think to have a place to come and to have a, something for yourself and a positive outlet is huge. And that's, what I love to provide and that's what I, I hope to have for so many people. But, and that's why I have this place. <laughs> this was my dream. And uh, I, I, there was an amazing group of people that helped me get here and help it to get off the ground. And so my goal is to have these doors open for anybody that needs them and no matter what's going on in their life and no matter where they are my hope is that they can walk through this door and find something in a community of people that will support them and a place that they can feel empowered no matter what they're going through that they have something here that they can um, utilize to stay mentally healthy and to stay empowered so.